This meeting is now called to order. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we have a roll call, please? Mr. Prince? Here. Ms. Perez? Here. Mr. Pavoni? Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Corman? Ms. Palmer? Here. Mr. Person? Here. Roll call, Mr. Mayor, two absent. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Prince. I move we excuse the absent council members. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Prince, seconded by Ms. Palmer that we excuse council members Pavoni and Corman. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. So this evening we have a special presentation by a Renton resident, Laura Eulen, who happens to be the executive uh, director of Valley Communications. Everybody knows that that is our dispatch center and we are one of five cities that operate this dispatch center. It's been very busy over the 4th of July and uh, so uh, Laura, welcome. Thank you, thank you very much. And I'm gonna apologize in advance. I had a bit of a coughing fit and I think I'm hoping it works and from the beginning hoping my voice stays with me. So good evening, and thank you so much for allowing me to talk to you about Valley Communications Center, your 911 center. My goal is to introduce you, who we are, and what we do to those who may not be familiar with us, and leave time to answer any questions that you might have. So Valleycom was formed in 1976 through an interlocal agreement made by Auburn, Kent, Renton, and Tukwila. And these cities realized that by joining together, they could be more efficient in providing emergency communication services. Neighboring cities and fire districts soon saw the wisdom of this, and they asked to join as contract agencies. In 2000, the ILA was amended to allow the city of Federal Way to join as an owner city. And today, we serve 23 agencies, uh, public safety agencies, and we provide radio system access to many school, water, sewer districts in South King County. In addition to the police and fire agencies of these five owner cities, Valleycom also provides 911 services to the cities of Algona, Pacific, Black Diamond, Des Moines, and also the fire departments of Skyway, Burien North Highline, Maple Valley, District 44, which covers Black Diamond in the areas east of Auburn, Vashon Island, the city of SeaTac, and King County Medic One. And that is really small, but <clears throat> if you could see it, it would be our organization chart. And it's quite simplified here, but it shows the governance that's been in place since 1976 with only a few modifications over the years. The administration board is comprised of the five owner city mayors, of which Mayor Law is the current uh, chair, and that is the ultimate governing authority. And the admin board meets monthly. Their responsibilities include approval of the biennial budget, monthly expenditures, and high-level policy decisions. This is the board that I report to as executive director. The operations board is made up of the police and fire chiefs from each of the owner cities and a represent, representative from the contract police and uh, contract fire agencies. And the ops board and I work closely to ensure that Valleycom is meeting our mission and that we are providing the service that they need. I am responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the center and I do so with the help of six managers who oversee operations, finance, HR, training and admin services and technology departments. So Valleycom is a nationally recognized communication center. And I've been with Valleycom for over 30 years and I'm very proud of what we've achieved. We strive for excellence in everything we do. However, we know that we're never always, we're never gonna get there. We constantly strive for it. So in 2001, Valleycom became the first 911 center on the west coast and the seventh in the nation to meet the standards set by the Commission of Law Enforcement Accreditation Agency, or CALEA. Since then, we've been reaccredited four times, and twice we've earned the flagship distinction, which identifies us as an elite organization among all accredited 911 agencies. The 911 Industries Professional Organization is known as APCO. That's the Association of Public Safety Communications Officers. 
And APCO's Project 33 Agency Training Program Certification is a formal mechanism for public safety communication agencies to certify that their training programs are meeting the American national standards. And Valleycom was the first in the nation to be certified under Project 33. We're also a certified partner with NICMIC, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. <clears throat> and all of our comm room staff receives training to recognize the risk factors associated with calls involving children. And within several days of receiving the training, one of our employees answered a call involving a child who was missing from a neighborhood park, and this happened to be in Federal Way. <clears throat> she had just had the training. She'd had a heightened sense of awareness that this could be more serious than just a, a child that had wandered off. In fact, it did turn out to be an abduction. The police agency told us that the call taker's quick recognition of the potential contributed to the safe return of this child. So Valleycom is a 911 public safety answering point, or a PSAP, and our core mission is to answer 911 calls and to dispatch the appropriate level of response. The training is extensive and it's complex. Our new hires attend a 10-week in-house academy class that's taught by our own communication training officers. And here they learn the geography, policies, techniques, and the telephone system, as well as the computer-aided dispatch system. After they pass that, they are then assigned to an experienced comm room partner, and they, that helps them transition from theory to application. Overall, it takes about 12 more weeks of this one-on-one, -on -one, and so overall, it takes almost two years to become a fully trained police and fire dispatcher. So this, oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. That's the comm room. It's kind of hard to see there. The map uh, shows that we have responsibility for a majority of South King County. We serve about 740,000 people. And the dark shaded areas represent the areas of so the cities where we handle both police and fire. And the lighter areas are unincorporated King County where we handle only the fire and EMS Medic 1. King County Sheriff's Office takes the police calls in those areas. We work very closely with them here in Renton as their uh, location. And the only areas that we don't directly provide service to in South King County are Enumclaw and the Port of Seattle. So we carefully track the number of calls that come to our center. It helps us in determining staffing and equipment needs. And what we know is the number of 911 calls received depends on many variables and sometimes the numbers defy explanations. You can see on this chart that our calls for service took, took a significant <coughs> dive in 2009 even though our police service area increased uh, with annexations, mostly in the Auburn area, but Renton annexed a bit as well. The decline in 911 calls was seen throughout the county. Uh, we're really at a loss to explain why, but we do know that they're on the rise again. Valleycom consistently has the highest call volume uh, for 911 centers in the state. So the challenge is we must staff to maintain an appropriate level of readiness. And so the call volumes do fluctuate in order to meet the need, but we have to have enough trained staff to meet that fluctuation. Given the length of time it takes to train personnel, you can see that we have to try to project quite a bit out to get the appropriate level. So finding qualified applicants to offset normal staff turnover is a continual focus of our HR department. And we are currently hiring, so if you know of anybody that might be a good fit, please send them to our website. Oops. So how Valleycom handles 911 calls is changing due to advances in technology. Changes in the 911 infrastructure are being made locally and nationwide to allow for what's known as next generation 911 features. This will take us from 1960s landline telephone foundation to a digital IP-based network. Texting has become a common method of communication. However, today we cannot receive a text to 911 at Valleycom or anywhere else in King County. Careful plans are being made to transition to the technology that will allow for texting, which will be of benefit to the deaf and hard of hearing community. But a voice call will always be the preference. The message, the public message will be Call if you can and text if you can't. In King County, that texting ability is at probably 12 months out due to uh, network security issues. Infrastructure upgrades will also allow us to accept automatic crash data notifications such as what OnStar provides 
as well as the ability to accept pictures and videos. So ValleyCom will continue to grow and adapt to meet the needs of our owner and contract agencies as technology advances and budgets continue to encourage creative solutions for all of us, ValleyCom will continue to do what we've done for 37 years. And that's to work with our agencies in true partnership to ensure we meet our mission to provide consolidated emergency communications for the protection of lives and property of the citizens that we serve. Our website address is valleycom.org, and there you will find our annual report, biennial budget, and other information about our agency. I thank you for your time and your attention, and welcome any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, Laura. Can you just give just a real quick synopsis of July 4th? I thought you might ask that. <laughs> we did see an increase on July 4th. It was crazy busy being over the weekend and the weather that we've been having. We staffed up to 16 call receivers and 16 dispatchers and two supervisors. That is the maximum amount of positions that we have in the comm room. And what we saw was about overall a 36% increase in call volume. I believe there were, in the entire valley, there were nine um, residential fires. There were 17 or so brush fires. The potential was amazing, and part of it came true, but our staff handled pretty good. We, we had reports that our staff didn't even want to take breaks because they wanted to stay where they were and work through it because it was just so busy. It, it was crazy. Laura, during the 8 to 2 witching hour on the 4th, was that when we had 1,000 uh, calls, 1,000? From 8 p.m., or I'm sorry, 9 p.m. until midnight on the 4th, we handled 1,501 911 calls. Just amazing. Yes. Uh -huh. And our, our sister agency to the north, NORCOM, which is Bellevue, Kirkland, that area up there, they handled 247. Oh. And most of those jurisdictions uh, out uh, do not they have a ban on fireworks and a lot of our jurisdictions plus of course all of unincorporated king yeah. county allows it so it's significant any questions from council yes mr mayor yeah mr person uh, laurie could you explain just for the public that's watching the what happens when you call 911 because so many times people don't understand that well the call receiver is taking the call that the information is going to the dispatcher so that sure. they, they think just Hurry send up something. Up. Don't, yeah. don't ask me any more questions. It's, it's a true partnership at Valleycom. Typically, there's 20 people or so on duty, um, we, and we do break it up between call receivers and dispatchers. The call receiver answers the phone. If it's an in-progress call, police or a medical call or a fire call, anything other than just a report call, the call receiver enters the information, basic information, into the computer system, the address and a, just a brief description of what's going on, they enter this, the call into the computer-aided dispatch system. The incident shows up at the appropriate dispatcher's screen, and they dispatch the units. So while the call receiver is talking to the reporting party, the dispatcher is sending the resources at the same time. And you're so right. That's one of the most common things that we have to reassure the citizen is, me talking to you is not delaying anything. We are sending people as, as soon as we can. The problem is, Legally, um, we get in trouble if we say help is on the way or I've dispatched somebody because that is a promise of um, service that it's not in our control when the officer or the fire truck gets there. Traffic conditions, uh, they could get pulled away for something else, they could on view something, heaven forbid they could get in an accident and get delayed, but if we tell them that help is on the way, there's an expectation of arrival. <clears throat> that we can't control. So we have to stay, say anything short of that, that you know, we're doing the best we can, I'm letting my partner know, we're advising units, and of course they want more than that. They wanna know that help is on the way. We have, uh, those of us on the board have the privilege to really see and understand the dynamics of the staff out there and the things that they do, and it is absolutely tremendous. They are, they are, unbelievably uh, talented individuals that when you hear the stress calls coming in and even the, the stress associated with air, air traffic from the police officers and firefighters at the scene that have an in progress big thing happening shots fired whatever it may be and they have to keep their cool 
they've got to they've got to keep everybody under control and it's just really really interesting to be able to listen to that we're getting a little bit better too uh, as things happen in certain jurisdictions that are a little bit uh, you know a larger event um, we're gonna we're gonna have uh, more reports to you so that you can actually hear airtime and see see what's taking place so that you're more familiar with what's happening and the other thing any council member ever wants a tour of Valley Com, you're more than welcome to go out and see what they're doing. It's, I'd be happy to take you out, or Laura will show you. Around. It's it. very, very interesting. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, and I, I've had that opportunity to take a tour some eight years ago. And um, but I do have a question for uh, you, Laura. Um, <clears throat> me and that dial in nine one one, and I'm a I'm a nine one one non emergency dialer. Mm -hmm at least a dozen times a year for a variety of different things. But for those individuals, different ethnic groups that don't really understand the complexity of what happens during the uh, course of making a 911 call, do you, what outreach do you have that you offer? Do you get out to different groups to help to educate and inform them about what takes place uh, when uh, they dial 911? Valleycom directly does not. We don't have the staff for that. However, we do work with the cities uh, that, that have the public outreach and also the King County E911 program office has a very strong public outreach uh, department and they're the uh, the message for all of the agencies in the county so that it's a consistent same message okay. they take that role on but Valleycom ourselves we do not have that kind of public outreach what we were able to do though to answer your question Greg is um, <clears throat> create a video mm -hmm. uh, that showed the process of an emergency happening and somebody calling 911 and we had police and fire involved in it and um, we were able to and it kind of address what councilman person was talking about in terms of people not understanding that calls are being dispatched while questions are being asked anyway we were able to make a video for channel 21 for all of the different jurisdictions uh, in several languages I believe I believe that we've got them translated anyway into several languages and so um, that the individual cities are, are hand, taking that okay. action one of the other things too that I would recommend uh, I observed on your presentation that on your uh, what we do slide uh, in your mission statement that you uh, the verbiage and I may be uh, paraphrasing uh, said something about serving our citizens uh, you're actually serving residents uh, throughout your uh, area and, and and when you use the word citizen it for people that may not be a citizen or you know uh, maybe a, trying to become a citizen or you know, even someone who's you know uh, it, it just it, it it seems that that might need a little resident works better in my opinion okay any other questions or comments for Laura well you know you can't buy, get by without me making a comment yeah. <clears throat> uh, fortunately <laughs> I've known Laura for every every, bit of every year years. that she's been a dispatcher <laughs> And when we first started Valley Com in an old brick building up in Kent, and and I'm very proud that we were able to have somebody of her quality stay with us, and now become our director. I mean, to start as a, a dispatcher, and I and I think it's an important commodity to have the past history and work through it and understand the change, and uh, she's most likely seen more change there than we have uh, even in the police and fire technology and i really personally appreciate uh all the hard work she's put in for all the years and on top of that she's a citizen of Renton. that's exactly and right. she participates <laughs> and helps in our community which i think is just fantastic so i just want to say thank you for all your years thank you any other comments or questions well, thank you very much, Laura. Appreciate you coming down. Okay, next to the administrative report, Mr. Covington. Yes, Mr. Mayor, Council will have a number of items uh, this evening. I want to just uh, remind you and the listening audience. A road art construction uh, started construction uh, today on the Riverview Bridge, or actually a little bit last week. The 50 plus year old bridge was removed last summer and will be replaced with a safer aluminum bridge. We expect that to be finished in September of this year. And uh, the replacement of the original 33-year-old concrete tile pavers by the Kitt Valley Restaurant and the North Shelter June Coulon Park started today. Uh, the walkway behind Kitt Valley down to Ivers will be re reconfigured to meet current ADA code. Access to the two restaurants and the restrooms will be open at all times. 
Parking will be limited due to the need to um, provide construction staging there. We're hope that hopeful that work will be done uh, in early October. Um, starting uh, July 29th and running through August 19th, a series of free financial literacy classes using the YWCA's Money Matters curriculum will be offered on Wednesdays from 11 to 2, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the City View Church, which is at 255 Hardy Avenue Southwest. These classes are sponsored by the city, by First Savings Bank, the YWCA, and Salvation Army, and will cover banking, budgeting, credit, and much more. Classes are open to both men and women. There will be free child care, food, and bus passes, plus participants may be eligible to actually receive up to $50 for completing the class. People that are interested in uh, this can contact us uh, at 425-430-6652 and or just register through uh, the YWCA. We have a number of road projects this summer. Let me just update a, a, a couple for our listening audience so they'll know where to drive and when. Um, uh, this week, we'll continue work on Lake Washington Boulevard near uh, Gene Coulon Park, uh, utility work, so there may be some temporary closures there or limitations on the road. Uh, this week as well, uh, we'll be continuing our work on the I-405 overpass at North 30th Street. Uh, this week we'll also uh, continue work in Southwest Grady Way. Um, and uh, uh, the f f July 23rd through the weekend, it'll be Renton River Days and so Hauser Way will be closed on the uh, 23rd through the Sunday. And then for a period of time Saturday, as you all know, we'll have the parade and so uh, South 3rd will be closed during the parade um, I think the other the rest of just just encourage we're doing our our annual overlay during the summer so we'll be in various locations uh, overlaying streets and so we just want to let people know if that uh, occurs give a lot of space uh, around the construction uh, equipment and personnel and finally uh, tonight on your agenda is an ordinance that amends our park rules um, in and around the piazza and we have uh, chief milosevic uh, kelly beamer who's our parks director as well as alex tuttle here in the city attorney's office uh, here to just explain a little bit more about what we're trying to accomplish with this ordinance am amendment thank you jay mayor law council president prince council members i'm kelly beamer parks and golf course director this is Governor Malasso is pleased to. Uh, Council, you have in front of you on the agenda, this, the consent agenda this evening, um, some park rule amendments. And as Jay had mentioned, with the help of the city attorney's office with Alex, um, a portion of the amendments are cleaning up and uh, removing some conflicting language that had kind of run through the park rules. So we wanted to get that reiterated in there. And then we also are including two new subsections that will be new to the park rules, one being um, urinating in public, and the second one will be prohibiting smoking in Piazza Park, Gateway Park, Big Five Lot, and the north side of the Pavilion Event Center. Um, this was noted in a memo that we sent out to you last week. And as a reminder, this uh, King County Metro had prohibited smoking in all of their areas approximately three years ago, and in and about the transit areas. Um, and what that did then is it increased significantly complaints and uh, cigarette butt littering, um, loitering, things that moved from the transit, transit center into Piazza Park and the Gateway Park areas. And, and I, like I said, a considerable amount of complaints coming from citizens and business owners. And as you know, we have a lot of events that go down there, such as farmers markets and the spring festival, car shows, things like that, that we try to highlight the downtown area. And we felt by, um, by adding th this amendment to this area, we would be improving this area and also giving police some tools to enforce as well as some park officials to enforce that um, throughout this area. Regarding the smoking, our biggest issue is uh, we just plan a, a strong education campaign of communicating with people that are down there. Um, it's not our desire to be heavy-handed by no means at the beginning. It's, it's to go out and communicate with the people that are down there and let them know what to do. Parks uh, rules are uh, probably develop some leaflets, some handouts, and uh, share that with the people that are down there. The last thing we want to do is any strict enforcement. So it's all about education at first, and we we'll, could possibly step it up to warnings. 
We just wanted to make sure if you didn't have any other questions and you were comfortable. With okay, any questions from council? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Person. So, so I just want to be sure my understanding of, of the ordinance is, well, it covers our city park. Smoking currently is prohibited in the transit center uh, by a county ordinance and also in our parking garage by that same ordinance of the county ordinance. That's correct. And that our our police officers, by being commissioned officers statewide, are able to enforce uh, the park the smoking restriction in the parking garage and the transit center. Yes, that was uh, under county as the unlawful boss conduct. But the, the city adopted under uh, Title VI, Chapter 31, the, the regulation of conduct of the transit center and the parking garage does, is included by definition as in the transit center. And so uh, it would, it would uh, also associate with no smoking. Okay, I, my concern is, is that when people are listening to this that they know that it's, it includes that so that they're not surprised if somebody tells them not to smoke. Any other questions from council on this topic? Is, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Ms. Is there any signage in the parking garage? I'm not picturing any, but that doesn't mean I don't smoke, so I wouldn't notice it. The signs I'm familiar with are, are more probably in the, the actual transit center, yes. but that's so we can't uh, uh, develop more signs to put in the whole area to educate folks. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Before Person. we move off this topic, I just uh, want to make a comment on the work that's going on at Coulon Park and out on the bridge. And I want to remind the public that we don't pick summer months to do those projects to inconvenience people. It's because we are required to meet with the fish window and the Department of Fisheries and all those regulatory agencies say, this is the only time that you can do that. Now, I will personal comment, I don't see how replacing pavers up above by Kid Valley can possibly affect fish. But that being said, we do comply with all, all those regulations and it costs us a lot of extra money to do those programs because A, we're taking parking away down at Coulon and the contractor has some restrictions to keep things open and moving, which slows his job down. And we were told several contractors took one look at the restrictions we had on it and said, we're not gonna uh, bid on it, which there again, drives the cost up. Anyway, that's my end of my editorial comment for right now. <laughs> okay, thank you. I just wanted to mention one other thing under the administrative report. Uh, many of you enjoyed the 25th annual Return to Rent and Car Show on uh, Sunday. And uh, there were thousands of people. It was uh, really well attended. And uh, as you know, the money raised that day from sponsorships and entry fees and so on go to youth scholarships that are managed through our police department. So it's just a great, a great effort by a lot of people. I just want to thank all the... Uh, employees, including police officers, community services, public works, a lot of people work to organize this event to handle, uh, you know, the complexities of shutting down a major three street through downtown Renton and, and to manage thousands of people. And it was a nice event. So anyway, good job by everybody. Okay, moving on. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Covington, were you finished? Okay, moving on to, we don't have anybody sign up for audience comments, so we'll, we'll move on to the consent agenda. We have eight items for council consideration. Are there any items you'd like uh, pulled for discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull E and F. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Prince. I move we approve the consent agenda minus items E and F. Second. Moved by Mr. Prince, seconded by Ms. Palmer, that council concur with the consent agenda minus items E and F. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Mr. Person, okay. E and F. Okay, I would like to advance both E and F to uh, in council concur, and I'll explain. E is a contract with the, well, I guess, K 
keep my glasses on so I can read here. Attorney and Notary Supply of Washington for office space in the uh, old city hall. And it really meets, the contract is the same, actually better contract for us than we've had in, on, uh, on the others. And I just don't see there's any sense in holding it up this evening. And the, the other one is one of these really no-brainers. The county wants to give us $174,000, and we've talked about this money coming in. This is not. Hmm. This has been in the mill for some time, and we've discussed it here at, on the council floor, and I think even community services has. So, with that, I would move that both E and F be council concurrent items. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember Person, second by Mr. Prince, that items E and F on the consent agenda be council concur items. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Moving on to unfinished business, Mr. Prince. No unfinished business, Mr. Chair. Ms. Perez. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I have two committee reports to present. Community Services Committee Committee Report. Fee waiver request for the 2015 Take a Warrior Fishing Event. Uh, the Community Services Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the requested $500 fee waiver for the boat launch and picnic shelter fees at Jean Coulon Memorial Beach Park on September 19, 2015 during the 2015 Take a Warrior Fishing Event sponsored by the Cast for Kids Foundation. This is signed by the committee chair and vice chair. I move that Council concur with the recommend action of the Community Service Committee. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Ms. Perez, second by Ms. Palmer. The Council concur with the Community Services Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, the second Community Services Committee report. Fee waiver request for the 2015 Cast for Kids Special Populations Children's Fishing Event. The Community Services Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the requested $500 fee waiver for the boat launch and picnic shelter fees at Jean Coulon Memorial Beach Park on September 12, 2015 during the 2015 Special Populations Children's Fishing Event sponsored by the Cast for Kids Foundation. This is signed by the committee chair and vice chair. Thank you. I move that council concur with the recommendation, recommend action of the Community Service Committee. Second. Thank you. Yeah, it's been moved by Ms. Perez, seconded by Ms. Palmer. The council concur with the Community Services Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Taylor. Uh, no unfinished business. Okay, Ms. Palmer. No unfinished business. Okay, and Mr. Person. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have no committee reports, but I do have a little piece of unfinished business. For those of uh, our listening audience that saw last week this gentleman in, complaining about his zoning that he that we had taken away his zoning and his ability to build his project well chip vincent took him downstairs they looked at the map and voila <laughs> we didn't change his zoning so he can build his project he could have been putting in for a building permit instead of standing up here complaining so uh, hopefully he builds his project Thank was you. Looking at the wrong map. Yeah, I don't know. He was very appreciative of the, <laughs> of the great service provided by the city of Renton. Well, that, we we provide just instantaneous <laughs> service whenever we can. That's exactly right. <laughs> Moving on to resolutions and ordinances, we have one resolution and two ordinances this evening. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the uh, the agenda bill that Council Member uh, Person approved included a resolution that he requested be approved as Council concur for the grant. I'm wondering if I could uh, include that tonight also. Sure. Okay, so the uh, this resolution is regarding the grant agreement with King County. Resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, authorizing the Mayor and City Clerk to execute an amendment to the Conservation Futures Interlocal Cooperation Agreement between the City of Renton and King County by including $174,000 allocation for the acquisition of the two open space parcels in the May Creek Greenway. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Person. I move the resolution to be adopted as read. Second. I move by Mr. Person, seconded by Mr. Prince, that this resolution be adopted as read. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thanks, Jason, for doing uh, that. No problem. Okay, so the next resolution is regarding the uh, 
Walker Street vacation. A resolution of the city of Renton, Washington, setting a hearing date to, of uh, August 3rd, 2015, to vacate an alley adjoining 555 Southwest Grady Way between Seneca Avenue Southwest and Lind Avenue Southwest. Uh, Dale Walker is the petitioner. Uh, this is file number VAC 15002. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Person. I move the resolution be adopted. Second. So moved by Mr. Person, second by Ms. Palmer that this resolution be adopted as read. Oh. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, the first ordinance is for uh, first reading only. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, amending Section 298 of Chapter 9, Parks Commission of Title II, Boards and Commissions, and Section 614.9 and 614.22 of Chapter 14, littering of Title VI Police Regulations of City Code, modifying the park rules and regulations by amending the regulations related to littering in parks, adding two new subsections, urinating in public, making urinating and defecating in public or in public view a criminal violation, and smoking, making smoking within Piazza Park, Gateway Park, Big Five Lot, and north side of the Renton Pavilion Event Center, a civil violation, and removing conflicting language from RMC 614-9 and amending language in RMC 614-22. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Person. I move the ordinance to be advanced to second and final reading this evening. Second. So moved by Mr. Person, second by Mr. Prince, that this ordinance be advanced to second and final reading this evening. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, for a second and third, <laughs> yeah, we did. for a second and final reading, an ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, amending Section 298 of Chapter 9, Parks Commission of Title II, Boards and Commissions, and Section 614.9, 614.22 of Chapter 14, littering of Title VI, Police Regulations of City Code, modifying the park rules and regulations by amending the regulations related to littering in parks, adding two new subsections urinating in public making urinating and defecating in public place or in public view a criminal violation and smoking making smoking within piazza park gateway park big five lot and north side of the Renton pavilion event center a civil violation and removing conflicting language from city code mr may yes mr person i move the ordinance to be adopted as read second I move by mr person seconded by mr prince that this ordinance be adopted as read requires a roll call hey mr prince aye oh. Ms. Perez? Aye. Mr. Taylor? Aye. Ms. Palmer? Aye. Mr. Person? Aye. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. All ayes. Ayes have it. Okay, and the final ordinance is also for first and second reading. It's regarding a franchise. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, granting unto Astound Broadband LLC doing business as WAVE. Authorized to do business within the state of Washington, its affiliates, successors, and assigns the right, privilege, and authority to install communications facilities, specifically fiber optic cable or related appurtenances, under, along, over, below, through, and across the streets, avenues, and alleys of the city of Renton within the public right-of-way of Renton. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Prince. I move the ordinance be advanced to second and final reading this evening. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Prince, second by Ms. Palmer, that this ordinance be advanced to second and final reading this evening. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, for the second and final reading, an ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, granting unto Astound Broadband LLC, doing business as WAVE, authorized to do business in the state of Washington, its affiliates, successors, and assigns the right, privilege, and authority to install communication facilities, specifically fiber optic cable and related appurtenances, under, along, over, below, through, and across the streets, avenues, and alleys of the City of Renton within the public right-of-way of Renton. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Prince. I move we adopt the ordinance as read. Second. So moved by Mr. Prince, second by Ms. Palmer, that this ordinance be adopted as read and requires a roll call. Mr. Prince. Aye. Ms. Perez. Aye. Mr. Taylor. Aye. Ms. Palmer. Aye. Mr. Person. Aye. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. All ayes. Ayes have it. Thank you very much, Jason. Moving on to new business, uh, Mr. Prince. Yes, Mr. Mayor. A um, few items. Um, we have no council. Uh, committed a whole meeting or council meetings on July 20th, it's council holiday, and also on July 27th, which is also a council holiday. Um, on August, on Monday, August 3rd, um, we have a committed whole meeting at 6:30 in council chambers. And we have one item. It will be a update on the score facility. And that's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Perez. 
No new, no new business, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Mr. Taylor. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Ms. Palmer. Yes, the transportation committee normally scheduled for July 28th, uh, it has been canceled, and that's it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Person. Right. Yes, uh, I was just pointing out to uh, Council. Uh, whatever your name is, yeah, Mar oh, Marcy. Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> is it, were you going to announce the planning and development committee for uh, Randy Corman? Oh, I guess I am. I'm the only committee member. I was going to say I'm not the vice chair. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. So the planning and development committee will meet Monday, August 3rd at 4 p.m. in the council conference room. Three items on the agenda. The first is commercial arterial development rules briefing. Second is residential building heights briefing. And the third is docket 11 briefing. All briefings. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Press. Before you go to council member person, I just realized I forgot to announce the, on Monday, August 3rd, the Municipal Arts Commission 50th anniversary reception at six o'clock in the conferencing center. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Person. Uh, <laughs> August 3rd, Monday, August 3rd, 5 p.m., the Finance Committee <coughs> will meet in the Council Conference Room. We have three issues. Uh, number one, vouchers. The second, 2015 second quarter budget amendment ordinance. And three, emerging issues in revenue streams. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Oh. Did you no, want to I'd, cancel your? Oh, I guess I have to cancel. And I, the public safety meeting on August 3rd is canceled. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we didn't have anybody in audience comment. Did I miss anybody for audience comment? Okay. So. Mr. Uh, Mayor? Yes, Mr. Prince. I move that the council meeting recess into executive se session for approximately 40 minutes to discuss labor negotiation and potential property acquisition. Um, no official action will be taken and the council meeting will be adjourned when the executive session is adjourned. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Prince, second by Ms. Palmer, that we recess into executive session for approximately 40 minutes for labor negotiations and potential property acquisition. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it.